Last factor. Uh, let's say, let's see if I have a good example here. Oh yeah, let's take CH3, C, uh, those two acids. Let me ask you again, which one on this first molecule, which hydrogen will come off first? Which one's the acidic hydrogen? Yeah, this one right here, because it's on the oxygen. Our oxygen is more electronegative, so it's more, it acts as an acid more readily. And in the same way, this hydrogen is the acidic hydrogen here, so I'll underline that. The one's on the oxygen. If there was a fluorine, a hydrogen on the fluorine, that would be even more acidic because it's more electronegative. Uh, or if there was a sulfur there, because it's going down, polarizable, that would be the most acidic. You can see how that works? These first two factors. Anyways, those are acidic hydrogens. If you write the conjugate base, and notice I'm drawing the Lewis structure for it. If you know Lewis or you were good at that, you still remember it, your life will be much easier in this, rock, in this realm. If you forgot it, that's unfortunate for you. So I've drawn out the Lewis structure for the conjugate bases. I took off a hydrogen. We want to see which one is more stable. Do you know which one of these two has resonance, the first one and the second one? One of them has resonance. The one with the This one. Yeah, yeah, this one has resonance. I'll draw it. Uh, it can move the double bond to the other oxygen like that. So those are resonance structures. Do you see how the minus charge moves from the oxygen to the right, to the top oxygen? That negative charge is spread around, it's going back and forth. That makes this one on the left, these two, more stable. Because that minus charge is going back and forth, it's not localized. Remember, we don't like it when the minus charge is sitting in one spot. That's like putting a mosquito in your tent. Okay? Versus having a mosquito, one mosquito in the city of Davis. Here, this minus, there's no resonance. So in this case, that minus charge cannot move. So this is not as stable as this one. Is that okay? Because of that, if you look on the top, which one's the stronger acid, the one on the left or the one on the right? Left or right? Yeah, this one is the stronger acid. on the left, because it has resonance. Okay? Is this a strong acid? No. So make her, the er stronger, comparatively it's stronger, but it's not considered a strong acid. It's still a weak acid, but it's stronger than this fool. Okay? Okay, did you want some examples? Okay, so you want to keep these four always in your mind. Okay. Um, we'll warm up with an easy one. So, uh, Which one's the stronger acid, on the left or the right? Yeah. This one's the stronger acid because of what factor? Polarizability, size, it's bigger, so it can hold that negative charge on the conjugate base better. Okay? Okay, now let's get a little weirder.
stronger acid, left or right. So on the right, what factor? What's, what's that? Yeah, electronegativity because it's more to the right and uh, polarizability because it's down. So it's two factors actually. Electronegativity and polarizability. There's another way you could have done this one. Even if you've never learned any of this stuff, you could have said, oh, that's one of my strong acids <laughs> versus that's a base. Right. So you could have done it that way too. But sometimes I ask you for the factors. So you'll have to write that down if I do. Okay. Let's do let's do a painful one. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's this one's painful. This versus right or left? Stronger. Right. It's the right one? How did you know that? What's that? Oxygen. What about the oxygen? Yeah. So the easy answer is, the more oxygens you see on a molecule, the more likely you'll have resonance structures. Okay. Uh, if you draw these out, H2S, look at that. There's no resonance whatsoever. Sulfuric acid. There's tons of resonance structures because you could make this a single bond and put the lone pair here. You can make this a single bond and put the lone pair here. You can make them both single bonds. Uh, that, so there's a bunch of fun stuff you can do there, moving the electrons around a lot. Okay? So this will have lots of resonance once you take off the hydrogen. And so the cons you get of this has a lot of resonance, so this one's a stronger one. Sometimes you might have to draw the molecule out, but in general, the one with more oxygens and the one with more multiple bonds, meaning double or triple, will have more resonance, okay? Because you need, oxygens tend to be born with double bonds. Uh, so, or sometimes there's no oxygens, but you just see a lot of double bonds there. Uh, because it would be resonant. Sometimes you have to actually draw it out to figure it out. You just have to see which one that can you move electrons. So you may have to review your resonance structures. If you want to risk it and say, oh, that might only be one question on the test, then you can just forget about it and guess 50-50. Right. Uh, in OCHEM, what they tend to do, they'll give you all these organics. Like, I've seen some tests that have like 10 of them, and you have to rank them from strongest to weakest. It's quite painful. If you wanted to do bases, it's just the opposite, okay? This, the other one would be the stronger base. Why is that? Oh, because it's... It's just the opposite. Uh, the more unstable conjugate base will make it go to the left, okay. according to our original reaction. You'll see your text in this section explains it much differently. I think it's extremely confusing. So I would encourage you not to read your text on this part unless you don't like the way I explained it. And if you don't, you can learn it the way they do. But they explain it much differently, I think it's more confusing. But I'd encourage you to do the practice problems because they're just as normal. But they'll have different ways of explaining how something's strong or weak.